Welcome to our channel. This video is part of a series based on the CITB book called Health, Safety and Environment Test for Operatives and Specialists. We guarantee that watching these videos is all you need to do to prepare for your final test. In each video, we will briefly cover a section's key points and then ask questions directly from the CITB book. This video focuses on section 1, Working Environment, covering the following topics, General Responsibilities, Accidents Reporting, First Aid and Emergency Procedures, PPE and Environmental Awareness. To make it easy to move through the video series, you will find a link in the top right corner. The actual CSCS test usually takes about 45 minutes, and you need to answer at least 45 out of 50 questions correctly to pass. Before we dive in, please support us by hitting the like and subscribe buttons. We appreciate it. Let us learn together. The Health and Safety at Work etc. Act, 1974, contains legal duties for employers and employees. Visitors and workers must be given a site induction and authorised to enter site. Employers must provide information to workers about site rules, welfare facilities and emergency procedures. Workers should be provided with clean welfare facilities and information regarding hazards and risks at work. Everyone on site is responsible for the consideration of neighbours and members of the public. Employees should follow a safe system of work agreed with the employer. A safe system of work would include information such as the sequence of work and any hazards associated with the task. The purpose of a risk assessment is to identify hazards and control risk. Risk assessments consider the likelihood of a hazard occurring and the seriousness of harm that could occur. A method statement will inform a worker of the safe way to carry out a task. If a task feels dangerous or unsafe, stop work and report it immediately. You have witnessed a serious accident on your site and are to be interviewed by a health and safety executive, HSE, inspector. What should you do? Ask your supervisor what you should tell the inspector. Not tell the inspector anything and ask them to talk to your supervisor. Cooperate and tell the inspector exactly what you saw. Ask other workers what you should tell the inspector. If you notice that a design detail can't be built in the way it has been drawn in the plans, what two things should you do? Leave that detail out altogether. Keep quiet as it will mean more work for you. Only make the changes when they are approved in writing. Raise the issue with your supervisor before you start work. Build it as you think it should be done. When workers arrive on site, what is the first thing they should do? Walk around the site to inspect the work from the day before. Enter the site by the easiest route and start work. Get their tools out of the store and start work. Make sure that the site team knows they are there. If a worker fails to report a near miss, what could happen? The company could go out of business through neglect. The employee could get a large fine. The near miss could be a serious accident next time. The site manager will be sacked immediately. What are two possible consequences for you if your employer does not prevent accidents and ill health at work? You will have to work longer hours to earn more money. You may suffer an injury, affecting your health and well-being. You won't get the training required to continue working on site. You may not be able to work, which would affect your income and family life. You will have worse welfare facilities on site while improvements are made. What are two possible consequences for employers of not taking measures to prevent accidents and ill health at work? They could be fined or imprisoned. They will damage the environment. They will need to employ more people. They will have to change the site layout for emergency vehicles. They will lose time and money due to the cost of any accident or ill health.
what does the word hazard mean? Anything that could cause harm. The construction site accident rate. The likelihood of something happening. A type of removable barrier or machine guard. What is the main reason for understanding the fire and emergency procedures on site? To know where the fire exits and assembly point are in an emergency. To know what tools and equipment can be used during an emergency. To help you to get time off work in an emergency. To stop anyone leaving site in an emergency. Who is responsible for managing health and safety on site? Site manager. Building inspector. Contracts manager. Health and safety executive, HSE. Why is it the employer's legal responsibility to discuss matters of health and safety with employees? So that employees do not have any responsibilities for health and safety. So that employees will never have to attend any other health and safety training. So that employees are informed of things that will protect their health and safety. So that your employer will not have any legal responsibility for employees' health and safety. General site rules would not normally include information about which one of the following. Personal protective equipment, PPE. Names and addresses of workers. Near miss and accident reporting. Site induction procedures. If someone is injured on site, where should this be recorded? In an accident book or record. On the safe system of work plan. On the site plan. In the method of work. What should all risk assessments identify? The employer. How to report accidents. The health and safety executive, HSE. The hazards in the work environment. When creating a risk assessment, the severity of harm is multiplied by what? The number of workers on site. The likelihood of harm occurring. The cost of injury or harm. The area of the construction site. Which two topics should be covered in a site induction? Site rules. Local transportation links. Holiday entitlement. Site emergency procedures. Local amenities. How would you expect to find out about health and safety rules when you first arrive on site? During the induction. In a letter sent to your home. By reading the health and safety policy. By asking other workers to show you around. What is a toolbox talk? A short training session on a particular safety topic. A talk that tells you where to buy tools. Your first training session when you arrive on site. A sales talk given by a tool supplier. What is the main reason for attending a site induction? To get to know other new employees. Site rules and hazards will be explained. To create the method statements for the site. Permits to work will be written and handed out. What should you do if the safety rules given in your site induction seem out of date as work progresses? Nothing, as safety is the site manager's responsibility. Speak to your supervisor about your concerns. Speak to your workmates to see if they have any new rules. Make up your own safety rules to suit the changing conditions. During the site induction, you do not understand something the presenter says. What should you do? Attend another site induction. Ask the presenter to explain it again. Guess what the presenter was saying. Wait until the end, then ask someone else to explain.
employers must provide workers with instructions that meet which requirement? Downloadable from the internet. Written in large print. Available in audio. In a format each worker understands. A worker finds a way of working that is quicker than the method statement they have been given. What should they do? Inform work colleagues so they can work this way. Get their work done more quickly so they can leave early. Get more work done so they can earn more money. Continue to follow the safe system of work for the task. Who should you speak to if the work of another contractor is affecting your safety? Your supervisor, the contractor, your workmates, the contractor's supervisor. What should you do if you cannot do a job in the way described in the method statement? Make up a better way to do it and carry on. Do not start work until you have talked to your supervisor. Ask other workers how they think it should be done. Contact the Health and Safety Executive, HSE. What should a worker do if the helmet they are using is damaged? Use it but keep checking it. Put a sticker over the damaged area. Report it at the end of the day. Replace it immediately. Plant and machinery should only be used by authorised and competent operatives. Reporting unsafe conditions is everyone's responsibility on site. Reporting near misses will help to prevent them happening again. Any accident causing injury must be recorded in an accident book. All relevant staff should be involved in investigating accidents and near misses. You suffer an injury at work and the details are recorded in the accident book. What must happen to this accident record? It must be kept in a place where anyone at work can read it. It must be sent to the insurance company at the end of the job. It must be treated as confidential under data protection laws. It must be destroyed at the end of the job due to confidentiality. What must be done if an operator is driving plant equipment faster than site speed limits? Alert all other staff on site to be careful. Inform a supervisor or manager. Shout at the driver telling them to slow down. Wait until they stop and talk to them about it. In order to reduce the risk of accidents, which one of the following should be avoided when driving vehicles on site? Use designated turning areas. Implement a one-way system around the site. Drive through loading and unloading areas. Reverse without the use of a vehicle marshaller. Which two of the following would result in you being ordered off-site? Losing your road user's driving license. Being under the influence of alcohol. Driving downhill with a heavy load. Driving without using the flashing beacon. Being under the influence of drugs. You have been injured in an accident at work and, as a result, are absent for more than seven days. Which two of the following actions must be taken? The accident must be recorded in the accident book. The local hospital and the benefits office must be informed. You must pay for any first aid equipment used to treat your injury. Your employer must inform the Health and Safety Executive, HSE. The emergency services must be called to find out how the accident happened. If you have a minor accident, who should report it? Anyone who saw the accident. The subcontractor. You, if possible. The Health and Safety Executive, HSE.
You are injured in an accident at work. When should you report it? The next day before you start work. Immediately or as soon as possible. Only if you have to take time off work. At the end of the day before you go home. Why should you report an accident? It helps the site find out who caused it. It is a legal requirement. So that everyone can find out what happened. So that your company will be held responsible. Who must you report a serious accident to? Site security. The police service. Your employer. The ambulance service. What action should be taken if you witness a serious accident on site? Telephone the local doctor for advice. Tell your supervisor that you saw what happened. Say nothing in case you get someone into trouble. Ask your workmates what they think you should do. Which of the following statements best describes a near miss? An incident where you were just too late to see what happened. An incident that nearly resulted in injury or damage. An incident where someone was injured and nearly had to go to hospital. An incident where someone was injured and nearly had to take time off work. While working on site, you cut one of your fingers. What should you do? Report it and get first aid if necessary. Clean it and tell your supervisor about it later. Wash it and if it is not a problem, carry on working. Report it at the end of the day or the end of the shift. What is the main objective of carrying out an accident investigation? To place blame. To identify the people involved. To find the cause and prevent reoccurrence to help track the cost of insurance claims. A scaffold has collapsed and you saw it happen. What should you say when you are asked about the accident? As little as possible, as you are not a scaffold expert. As little as possible because you don't want to get people into trouble. Exactly what you saw, giving as much detail as possible who you think should be blamed and punished. Which two of the following are the main reasons for reporting accidents, incidents and near misses? To find out whom claims should be made against. To understand how and why things went wrong. Certain incidents or accidents have to be reported to the Health and Safety Executive, HSE to make sure none of the supervisors find out about the accident, to help the company avoid being prosecuted or fined. Which two of the following items should be recorded in the accident book? National insurance number. Date of the accident. Location of the hospital. Injuries sustained. Telephone number. If someone is injured at work, who should record it in the accident book? The first aider identified on site. The company contract manager. The injured person or someone acting for them. Someone from the Health and Safety Executive, HSE. Which of the following does not have to be recorded in the accident book? Details of the injury sustained. The injured person's home address. The date and time that the injury happened. The injured person's national insurance number. Which of the following is the least important reason for recording all accidents? It might stop them happening again. 
Details have to be entered in the accident book to find out who is to blame and make sure they are prosecuted. Some accidents have to be reported to the Health and Safety Executive, HSE. All first aiders should have a current, up-to-date first aid at work certificate. The place to go in the event of an emergency is called an assembly point. The location of the emergency assembly point should be identified in a site induction. What should be done in the event of an emergency on site? Follow the site emergency procedure. Collect your personal items and leave the site. Leave the site by the nearest exit and return home. Phone the Health and Safety Executive, HSE, for advice. Which two of the following will help you to find out about the site emergency procedures and emergency telephone numbers? Guidance from the Health and Safety Executive, HSE, website. Reading the site notice boards. Guidance from your local job centre. Attending the site induction. Looking in the telephone directory. How should you be informed about what to do in an emergency? Give two answers. By attending the site induction. By looking in the health and safety file. By asking the health and safety executive, HSE. By asking at the local hospital. By reading the site notice boards. What two things should you do if there is an emergency situation on site? Go to the designated assembly point. Look for other people who may not know what to do. Finish what you are doing. Collect personal items from the site office. Leave the area via the nearest exit. What information should be gathered after a near-miss incident occurs? The names of next of kin for the people involved. Where those involved lived at the time of the incident. The activities that were being carried out at the time. The cost of the project at the time of the incident. You witness a serious accident on site. What immediate action should you take? Give two answers. Call out to other workers so they can call for help. Check if it is safe to approach the injured person. Sit the injured person up and give them food and water. Record the date and time in the incident book. Lift the injured person and take them to the site office. What should not be in a first aid kit? Bandages. Plasters. Safety pins, tablets and medicines. Does your employer have to provide a first aid kit? Yes, every site must have one. Only if more than 50 people work on site. Only if more than 25 people work on site. No, there is no legal duty to provide one. If the first aid kit on site is empty, what should you do? Bring your own first aid supplies into work. Ignore the problem as it is always the same. Find out who is taking all the first aid supplies. Inform the person who looks after the first aid kit. What is the one thing a first aider cannot do? Give mouth to mouth resuscitation. Stop any bleeding. Give you medicines without authorization. Treat you if you are unconscious. Evacuation routes should be lit at all times of the day, painted bright green, used as assembly points, clear and unobstructed. 
If you find an injured person and you are on your own, what should you do first? Assess the situation. Do not put yourself in danger. Inform your supervisor that someone has been injured. Move the injured person to a safe place, then find your supervisor. Ask the injured person what happened and then find your supervisor. Someone working in a deep inspection chamber has collapsed. What should you do first? Climb into the inspection chamber and give first aid treatment. Get someone to lower you into the inspection chamber on a rope. Raise the alarm and stay by the inspection chamber, but do not enter. Ask someone to find your supervisor while you try to rescue the worker. Someone is knocked unconscious and you are not trained in first aid. What should you do first? Send for medical help. Slap their face to wake them up. Give them mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. Turn them over so that they are lying on their back. Someone has fallen from height and has no feeling in their legs. What should you do? Keep them still until medical help arrives. Roll them onto their side and bend their legs. Raise their legs to see if any feeling comes back. Keep their legs straight and roll them onto their back. Someone collapses with stomach pain and there is no first aider on site. What should you do first? Ask them to sit down. Get them to take some painkillers. Ask someone to call the emergency services. Help them to lie down in the recovery position. If you think that someone has broken their leg, what should you do? Place them on their back. Send for the first aider or get other medical help. Use your belt to strap their legs together. Place them on their side in the recovery position. If you cut your finger and it won't stop bleeding, what should you do? Wash it, then carry on working. Find a first aider or get medical help. Wrap something around it and carry on working. Tell your colleagues because you may need to rest. If there is an emergency while you are on site, what should you do first? Leave the site and go home. Phone home and then leave the site. Follow the site emergency procedure. Phone the Health and Safety Executive, HSE. If someone is in contact with a live cable, what should you do first? Phone the electricity company. Dial 999 and ask for an ambulance. Isolate the power and call for help. Pull them away from the cable. Employers should provide workers with personal protective equipment, PPE, and the means to maintain it correctly, free of charge. Wearing personal PPE will help to protect workers from physical injury or ill health. Size and fit should be considered in the selection of suitable PPE. Stop work immediately and replace PPE if it gets damaged. When must your employer provide you with personal protective equipment, PPE? Twice a year. If you pay for it. If it is in the contract. If you need to be protected. If you have to work outdoors in bad weather, why should your employer supply you with waterproof clothing? To keep you warm and dry so you take fewer breaks. To protect you from the weather, which will reduce trips and falls. To keep you warm and dry so you are less likely to catch Viles disease, leptospirosis. To protect you from the weather as you are less likely to get muscle strains if you are warm and dry. Which of the following statements about personal protective equipment, PPE, is not true? You must use it as instructed. 
you must pay for any damage or loss. You must store it correctly when you're not using it. You must report any damage or loss to your supervisor. Which of the following statements about wearing a safety helmet in hot weather is true? You can modify it to keep your head cool. You must wear it at all times and in the right way. You must take it off during the hottest part of the day. You can wear it back to front if it is more comfortable that way. What should you wear if there is a risk of materials flying into your eyes? Tinted welding goggles. Laser safety glasses. Chemical rated goggles. Impact rated goggles. When using a grinder or cut off saw, what type of eye protection should be worn? Impact rated goggles or full face shield. Light eye protection, safety glasses. Reading glasses or sunglasses. Welding goggles. When should you wear safety footwear on site? All the time. Only when working inside. Until the site starts to look finished. Only when working at ground level. When is the only time that you do not need to wear head protection on site? If you are self-employed. If you are working alone. If you are in a safe area, like the site office. If you are working in hot weather. When you start a new task, how will you know if you need any extra personal protective equipment, PPE? You will always need it. By looking at the risk assessment. By looking at the company web page. By looking at your employer's health and safety policy. What is the main risk to this worker wearing only these items of personal protective equipment, PPE? Dermatitis to skin. Damage to hearing. Eye injuries. Breathing in harmful dust. When selecting appropriate personal protective equipment, PPE, what is the most important factor to be taken into account? The type of hazard. Can it be recycled? The cost of the equipment. How long it will last. What additional measures can be worn under a hard hat in cold weather? A baseball cap. A jumper with a detachable hood. A woolly hat. A manufacturer's attachment. What will safety footwear with a protective midsole protect you from? Spillages which may burn the sole of your foot. Blisters which could occur in warm, wet conditions. Twisting your ankle as they have better grip than regular shoes. Nails or sharp objects which could puncture the sole of your foot. Which condition could be prevented if the correct gloves are worn while handling a hazardous substance? Arthritis. Skin disease. Vibration white finger. Raynaud's syndrome. Will all types of glove protect your hands against chemicals? Yes, all gloves are made to the same standard. Only if you cover the gloves with barrier cream. Only if you put barrier cream on your hands first. No, different gloves protect against different types of hazard. Which item of personal protective equipment, PPE, is helping to protect the worker from dermatitis? Good quality personal protective equipment, PPE, will be marked with which letter or letters? CE, C, H, S, E, R. How should a safety helmet be worn to get maximum protection from it? Back to front. Pushed back on your head. Square on your head. Pulled forward.
What should you do if your disposable foam earplugs keep falling out? Throw them away and work without them. Put rolled up tissue paper in each ear instead. Put two earplugs in each ear so that they stay in place. Stop work until you are shown how to fit them properly. If you need to wear a full body harness and have not used one before, what should you do? Try to work it out for yourself. Ask for expert advice and training. Read the manufacturer's instruction book. Ask someone wearing a harness to show you what to do. Which of the following figures is wearing the correct personal protective equipment, PPE? Where on the body would a worker wear respiratory protective equipment, RPE? Arm, leg, face, body. Everyone is responsible for minimizing the amount of waste generated on site. Following the site environmental risk assessment will help to prevent pollution on a construction site. Segregating waste materials supports recycling and helps to avoid pollution. Reusing leftover materials helps to save energy and conserves raw materials. Recycling construction materials avoids waste going to landfill. Everyone on site should take responsibility for saving energy and water by turning off plant equipment and taps when not in use. A good way of reducing energy if heating or cooling systems are being used in site accommodation is to keep windows and doors closed. Spill kits should be available to clean up spilt chemicals and oils. Bats and badgers are classed as protected species and are protected by law. Many historic buildings are listed and protected by law. Permission is required before making any changes to them. What should be done with waste concrete and washout water? Bury it on site as it will break down over time. Pour it down a drain with plenty of water. Bury it in a disposable bin liner. Place it in a lined skip for recycling. This label is shown on the container of a liquid that a worker is using on site. What does it mean? It can be used to feed plants and fish. It is harmful to the environment. It could cause a drought. It will only cause death to fish. Which two of the following are common causes of water pollution on site? Fuels being stored incorrectly and too close to drains. Rainwater washing material out of skips into surface water drains. Exhaust gases from mobile plant getting into drainage systems. Smoking and e-smoking near drainage systems. Walkways freezing in winter near drainage systems. Which one of the following is true of a spill on site involving just one litre of oil? It is too small to cause a problem. The main problem is that oil is expensive. It will contaminate the ground. It could cause serious air pollution. Which three statements are reasons why saving energy is important? It helps to reduce fuel and energy bills on site. It helps to increase energy use on other sites. It helps to save natural resources used to generate energy. It helps energy companies to charge more for their services. It helps to reduce the impact of climate change caused by burning fossil fuels. What are two of the best ways of helping to save energy on site and reduce harmful emissions? Switch off plant and equipment, including generators, when they are not in use. Use a generator rather than mains electricity for the offices and small items of equipment. Report any defective non-powered hand tools so that they can be repaired or replaced. Keep windows and doors closed in offices and welfare facilities when the heating is on.
overordering materials can result in what? Accident. Waste. Danger. Lower costs. You are on site and need to throw away some waste liquid that has oil in it. What should you do? Pour it down a drain or sink in the welfare facilities. Pour it slowly onto the ground and let it soak away. Pour it into a sealed container and put it into a general waste skip. Ask your supervisor what the disposal process is for contaminated liquid. Which two items are classed as hazardous waste? Broken bricks. Untreated timber offcuts. Panes of glass. Fluorescent light tubes. Used spill kits. Which items are hazardous waste and which are non-hazardous waste? Fluorescent light tubes. Broken bricks. Untreated timber offcuts. Oil-based paint. What is the correct way to clean up oil that has leaked from machinery onto the ground? Put the oily soil into the general waste skip. Wash the oil away with water and detergent. Mix the soil up with other soil so that the oil cannot be seen. Put the oily soil into a separate container for collection as hazardous waste. How should hazardous waste be dealt with on site? Give two answers. Put it in a mixed waste skip. Segregate it from other waste. It can be put into any skip on site. Place it in the correctly labelled container. Take it to the nearest local authority waste tip. Under environmental law, which of the following statements is true? Only directors can be prosecuted if they do not follow the law. Only companies can be prosecuted if they do not follow the law. Only employees can be prosecuted if they do not follow the law. Companies and employees can be prosecuted if they do not follow the law. What should be done if there is an oil or diesel spill on site? Use a spill kit to clean it up before the end of the day. Ignore it. Oil or diesel spills do not have serious long-term effects. Stop work, contain the spill, notify the supervisor and then clean up the spill. Call the environment agency immediately so they can arrange to have it cleaned up. Which of the following is most likely to cause air pollution? Fuel spillage. Using diesel engines. Surface runoff. Excessive noise. Which two actions could help minimise waste? Reuse offcuts, such as half bricks, rather than discarding them. Use new materials at the beginning of each day. Leave bags of cement and plaster out in the rain unprotected. Only take what you need and return or reseal anything left over. Always take more than required, just in case you need it. What are the two most important reasons why waste should be segregated on site? The waste will take up less room in a skip. It is generally more cost-effective to dispose of segregated waste. So the client can check what is being thrown away. So the wastes can be used or recycled more easily. To make sure the labourer has enough work to do. Which of the following is bad practice? Storing materials safely. Mixing all waste in one skip. Refueling carefully to avoid spills. Switching off plant and equipment when it is not in use. On site, waste should be collected in what? 
segregated skips, bins and bays, general skips, bays and buckets. Certain species of plants and animals in England are protected by law. A worker is breaking the law if they do which two things to the plant or animal. Report it. Photograph it. Remove it. Feed it. Destroy its habitat. Which of the following is an effective way to avoid causing harm to protected species? Only working at night. Avoiding breeding season. Take them to the site office. Using manually operated machinery. During excavation work, some interesting old coins are found in the loosened soil. What is the most appropriate action? Stop excavating the site and contact the supervisor. Keep excavating and see how many more there are to find. Keep quiet. The person who found them should keep them. Hide them. Archaeologists working on site will delay the works. Preserving old buildings is important for contributing to an area's what? Historical record. Cost of living. Infrastructure. House prices. Which of the following does not cause a nuisance to neighbours of a building site? Dust and fumes from the site. Carefully directed site lighting. Lorries and heavy plant traffic. Noise and vibration from the work. You are carrying out a noisy work activity and realise that it cannot be finished within the normal working hours of your site. What is the first thing you should do? Carry on so that you can finish doing the job as soon as possible. Visit the neighbours of the site to tell them what you will be doing. Ensure you are wearing appropriate hearing protection before you resume work. Stop work and inform site management so they can look at the impact of the activity. Why is it bad practice to store heavy materials underneath a tree? The tree branches could get damaged. Materials are not protected from the tree sap. Mold could grow on the stored materials. Compaction of the soil could damage the tree roots. Which of the following would help to protect the environment? Keeping accurate timesheets. Arriving on time for work every day. Keeping to the health and safety rules. Saving water and energy wherever possible. What is the best way to minimise dust on site? Covering the whole site. Using powered tools only. Reducing use of the wheel wash. Dampening using fine water sprays. What type of pollution would you associate with handheld power tools? Smoke, noise, water, light. Congratulations. You are a step closer to success. Keep learning until you reach your goal. You can find a link in the top right corner to go to the next video.